What up, Spin Psycho, Busy Bisc, one in the house. Yeah. Peace, Spin Psycho Pro, Nup Fan, Nuclear Family, Scott Pro Show. What up, Tone Tank, Nuclear Family, Illa the Nairs, and Scrum Life Army. Hi, everybody, my name is Beige One, uh, Junk Science, Nuclear Family, Embedded. I'm Jesse, Embedded Music, <laughs> Spin Psycho Radio. I'm, I'm back here, I'm Metro, I say Metro. Smash, Def Jets. Worldwide, planet Earth, planet Mars, all of us. What's up, I'm Crayo, and it is the gay family. So, I'm a little velocity. Yeah, say that louder, son. The undercard of the sound loud, when they got the mic. Shut up, man. Yo, yeah, it's the hush, man. The man who had the snap rule. Look at this one back here. Jump science, nuclear family. Nah, let it. No? Hey, now. Half the women! Nice. These are the ones you gotta pay for at the bar. Hello, America. Scott Doe, Nuclear Family, Scott and Pope, Boys and Girls Club. How do you do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My skateboard. My, my skateboard was the beginning, graffiti took second, turntables took third, breakdancing took fourth, MCing was in between all of that, and now it's more MCing and everything, but I'm, I'm, a, I'm a corner dude, I play with all the elements, you know? So, but my skateboard got me to graffiti, which is my room. So paint walls, rap on microphones, play with your turntables, you know? Fuck with six steps and all that shit. But yeah, skateboards, man. Alright, well, my mother made me go get an autograph from LL Cool J at the gas station in like 80, 85 maybe, maybe 86. And I didn't want to go get an autograph from him, but she was like, do it, I think he's cute. And then after that, I started like watching LL Cool J videos, and then I got to see other rappers around my neighborhood that I like, like Slick Rick and all that stuff. He learned how to lick his lips like a pro. Yeah, yeah, see, yeah he yeah. learned how to lick his lips from LL. Alright, this is going funny style, but whatever. I, I went to high school and, and got into the whole b-boy culture, man. Hip, you know, hip-hop definitely raised me, like someone in my group said, you know? Um, but, it's, but uh, yeah, whatever. You know, DJing, you know, MCing. All amazing dancers out there inspire me to want to write rhymes to go along with the, the times we're living in. So I continue to practice that craft. And then uh, now I'm here. And it's a great room with all these great people. What's up, I'm Tone Tank. <laughs> what are you doing? He's too cool. And I started rapping. Um, I, I think this kid was fine, man. Yeah. He took my story. Tone's a beast, though. Man. I, I started rapping. Um, and from skateboarding, took me to graffiti. And graffiti took me to um, yeah. drugs and alcohol. And drugs and alcohol took me to um, freestyling because we couldn't be in the house. And like listening to music and shit, so we could freestyle in the corner, and that's what happened. And um, I remember the first shit I heard was listening to Cool DJ Red Alert when it was on 98.7 on my little alarm clock radio. And the first thing I remember is probably not the first thing I heard, but the first shit that was like some real hip hop. I remember EPMD Headbanger, and I was just like, "What the fuck is this?" I was like, this is amazing. Like, Redman had the wicked with the style. You think I had cerebral palsy, like, rah, rah, rah. And that was like, just nothing was like that. I never heard nothing like that before. And I've been hooked since then. And, um, yeah, pass to the left. <laughs> Cypher at the moment were able to like connect with people with just words off the top. 
top of the head. It was like, that's what made me want to like try to connect with people. And I've never been into freestyle really like particularly. Um, I try to do that with the written stuff, but uh, that's that's the ex you know, particular experience that brought me into it. I've always loved writing, so it's a, it's a challenge to, to, to do it. You do. I come across all the way back out there. Yeah. <laughs> I find it harder than I like doing stuff. It's harder. <laughs> collecting records, jazz records, when I was like 16, and then I moved to New York and went to college, and got into college radio, and up in uh, Harlem at City College, and started doing college radio, and then I got into pirate radio, and all we did was invite MCs up, and so after, uh, you so after working with MCs on Pirate Radio for about a year and a half, and they sh the FCC shut the Pirate Radio station down, I uh, got production equipment and started recording cats and making beats and shit. And that was in 96. In this. I discovered hip hop music uh, in my boy's older brother's room. Say that again, boy's older brother's part. What? <laughs> I discovered hip hop in my friend's older brother's bedroom. Yeah. Oh, better. That's not even. He had the uh, turntables and all the records. I remember. We we we'd, we'd hang out in his room when he wasn't there and listen to his records and he had um like blue shag carpet. I remember what? What? sitting on that carpet listening to his records. You know, it was like a secret world that he had. He also had like weed and it smelled like weed in his room. No, I'm a blue dude. It was like that. You know. Jesus. Uh, an interesting world that I have. Uh, Jesus. Like, Jesus. Is it good? I don't know. No, Hip-hop music, uh, the only thing I, that I always loved ever for no, forever. Can't Not like a woman will leave so I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I do care. It informed everything I ever done in my entire life and everything that I am today. Um, as a beat maker, I mean, I loved hip hop 
for a while, but I was like, I don't know, 10 or 11. And I used to have the jukebox, which was the cable channel. It was like Channel 66. And people would choose songs. And Beats never really did nothing to me. But I, there was this one time, and all of a sudden it's like, da 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 I was like, you know, they reminisce over you. And I was like, I didn't even understand where that came from, how the, the whole science of it. And then I always wanted to make beats, but I knew that it wasn't a possibility because I knew that you need an MPC, you need this, you need that. And then when I was like 17 or so, I found about you know free programs that you download off the internet and make beats off of. And then through that, I was like, okay, I can do this. I've been trying to do it since. And doing it, man, not trying. And doing it, not trying, doing it. You're doing it well? You missed one dude. That's your appointment. You missed one dude, though. He's snuck in right here. This is very important. Introduce yourself. This is behind the scenes. He's the finance here. Sneaky, sneaky. He calls himself any MC, but by no means is he any MC. You gonna go get beer ready? Yeah. Get beer. You gotta tell her why, um... Tell her how you got in hip-hop. Well, we should've told her some other shit. <laughs> and the color. And what's your favorite color. ice cream is? I like ice cream. And the, the color of that day. And the temperature. Uh... What's the first question? It was a Tuesday. The first question was, how you got into How you got into hip hop? Dang. I don't know. Um, my, my father had mad records, mad jazz records. And then my brother started bringing home KRS records and just old school records. And then when Low End Theory dropped, I realized that all the jazz records my father listened to made sense with the music my brother was listening to. That, uh, I could incorporate all that shit my father was playing into hip hop, which is pretty fresh. So that's, how, that's when I first started getting into hip hop.